Greetings and welcome to From the Basement. In this video we're going to take a look at getting our koalas moving from Chapter 7 in The Game Maker's Apprentice. So we've got everything set up for our room. Go ahead and bring that room back up again. Remember we set this up so that way we have pretty much all of our movement test uh, options available. You know, uh, three surrounded on three sides, surrounded on two sides, uh, Surrounded on two sides, both you know, vertically and horizontally, on one side. So we got, and we've got free movement. You know, can I move when there's nothing around me? So we've got all of our movement tests set up. So let's go ahead and get this working. Now I had my little bouncy koala. Uh, I'll use this as my test point. If you don't have a bouncy koala set up already, just create a new object and set the initial sprite to koala stand. That's going to be our starting point. Let me get rid of my bouncy logic here. And I am going to call this Koala. Now, unlike we did with Lazarus, we're not going to need separate Koalas for all the different animations. Uh, we're, this time it's going to be a little bit simpler. So we're just going to have one Koala object, switch the sprite out as necessary. Uh, because in this particular case, we don't really need to keep track of like, are we in the standing state or are we in the moving state? This game doesn't really matter. Also, this might seem a little bit odd, but let's set the parent of the koala to wall. I know, that seems a little bit odd. The thing you have to keep in mind when you are setting parents is does not is not does this make logical sense from a real world perspective? It makes no sense whatsoever from a real world perspective to say that a koala has anything in common whatsoever with a wall. Instead, the key thing to ask when you're thinking about uh, parent-child relations in game creation or programming in general is, what makes sense in terms of shared properties and actions? And in this case, what we're going to have happen here is we're going to have multiple koalas on the screen, but we don't want the koalas to stack on top of each other. We also don't want the koalas to move onto walls either. And so in this particular case, koala and wall do share a little bit of some same properties. A koala is a wall insofar as we don't want another koala walking on top of another koala. Hence it makes sense from a programming perspective for a koala to also be a wall. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work here. Now, let's see here. Let's get the room back up. So we've got this grid. Let me arrange things here a little bit. So we've got this grid, and we want the koala to move within this grid. Now, we have got to make sure that the koala stays on this grid. Because what will happen is by default right now, all of our collision masks are set to the entire square. Uh, and we, 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 I could set the collision mass so the collision mass perfectly match the sprites. That would work too. The thing is, if we look at our koala sprite, let's go ahead and get our koala stand sprite up here. He's got all these little like fringes and ruffles and stuff. And so if we set the collision to be pixel perfect, what could happen in this type of game is that you could get caught on one tiny little pixel. And you'll not, the player won't immediately understand, well, wait a minute, why am I caught? Why, why did I stop? I, I just got killed. Oh, come on, this game's, this game's junk. It's broke. Why couldn't I move? Well, because the player didn't notice they had one itsy bitsy teensy weensy little pixel that was catching on one teensy itsy bitsy witsy little pixel on the wall. Hence, collision can't move. We want to avoid that frustration. Uh, there's several different solutions to that. The easiest solution is to ensure this koala stays on this grid. Now, we don't want the koala to magically snap from grid point to grid point. Some game styles that works okay on, not for this one. So we still want the koala to smoothly you know, transition from grid point to grid point. But we only want to move while we are on the grid. So let's go back over here to our koala. Let's expand this out a little bit here. All right, so let's take a look first at uh, our movement. So we'll do a keyboard, and we'll start off with left. 
And it's the same thing as the book, uh, page 132, by the way. So we're going to start off with the left key. Now we're using a keyboard event. We don't want to have to have the player press the left key every time they want to move a square. That'd be kind of annoying. We want the player to have the option of holding down the left key to move. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to check to see if we're on the grid. Because if we are not on the grid, we want to ignore this command. We want to ignore this event. So we're going to go to control. And on control, we have a question. Check grid. Is this object aligned to a grid? And since our grid is a 40 by 40 grid, we say self, snap horizontal 40, snap vertical 40, OK. Oops, and not. So this is what it should look like. Snap to 40, 40, not. So in other words, we're asking if we are not aligned to this grid, what should we do? And there's a very useful command in here, which is exit event, which is this little circle with an X through it in your control section. And it does what it says on the tin. It exits this event. You hit this action, you bail on the event immediately. Nothing else is processed. So that pretty much gives us a dead stop. Now, the next question we need to check on is, you know, can we move into the space? What we can't use is we can't use check empty. The reason being is we want to allow the player to kill themselves. And with check empty, eventually we're going to be having buzz saws and dynamite and all sorts of other hazards that the koalas need to avoid. But check empty won't care. It just simply, is it empty? Is there something there? If there's a stick of dynamite there, yes, there is something there. We won't be able to move. So we can't use check empty in this case. In this particular instance, it does matter how we check this. So instead, we, and same thing for check collision. Yes, if there's a stick of dynamite there, we're going to collide with it. What we want, what we have to use in this case, is check object. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that there is not a wall where we want to move. Now, since we're basing this, you know, relative of our current position, in other words, you know, is there a wall to my left? we got to make sure we have relative checked. We are moving to the left, so that would be towards zero. Remember, zero, zero is in the upper left-hand corner. And so that would be negative 40. We're not moving on the Y, so that would be zero. So we're going to check to see if there is not a wall at negative 40, zero, relative. And if there is not a wall, I hope we have a whole series of actions that we need to do for that. So if there's not a wall, we need to move. We'll start off with a move in direction. And since we want to move, you know, on the four primary directions, we just need to use the uh, move fixed, the green arrow version. Get back over there. So we're going to move to the left. And come on, select. Thank you. My mouse foo is weak today. Uh, we need to move at a speed of five. And again, this speed is important. Not so much the actual speed, but making sure it's a multiple of 40. Like if we set it to a speed of, say, three, we're going to be moving three squares before we can stop again, 120 units over. That's the first time that we'll actually be in a multiple of 40 again. So we got to make sure our speed is a saying, you know, it'll go into 40 evenly. So 5, 8, 10, although Jesus, 10 would be like, that's like lightning koala right there. But 5 works pretty good. So we'll start moving in direction. Now we're also going to want to update our sprite. So we're going to change our sprite into a koala left. And we want this to animate, so we're going to leave sub image and speed alone. We're just saying, okay, you know what? Since we're moving to the left, use the left. Now, if there was a wall there, we need to stop moving and change our sprite back to the stand sprite. So we're going to go back to, oh, sorry, still on control. We're going to drag in the else, drag in our blocks, go to move, 
and we're going to want to stop moving. So the move fixed, stop, zero, OK? And then we need to change our sprite. So, oops, main one, <coughs> change sprite. And we'll change back to a koala stand. And that's pretty much it. Now we have one last thing that we need to do here before we can test our first movement ability. And that is ensure that the koala can stop without <coughs> running into a wall. <coughs> Excuse me. Right now, the only way the koala will stop is if the player is holding down the key while running into a wall. If the player just wants to move one space and just presses the arrow key once and releases it, no dice. Koala is going to keep walking and would walk through walls at that point. We only stop at walls if the arrow key is being held down. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an event, but now this time we got to get a little bit tricky. We're going to add a step begin step. Remember, begin steps are processed before the normal update or before the normal step, which means before keyboard commands are processed. So what we can do is we'll say, OK, we're going to do a begin step event. We are going to check to see if we are aligned to the grid. So we're going to drag over that check grid again and do 40, 40. This time we want to check to see if we are on the grid. And hit OK. So if we are aligned to the grid, what we need to do is stop moving. So come back over here, oops, and two actions. So we need our start and end blocks. Don't forget these start and end blocks when you've got multiple actions associated with the question. We need to stop moving. And we need to change back to a koala stand sprite. So how this will work is every single frame, we will check this. If we're aligned to the grid, we will stop. But now, since this is a begin step event, what will happen is if we're holding down the left arrow key, we'll check our begin step. Oh, we're aligned to the grid. Stop moving. Then we will process this during the regular step update and go, oh, our left key arrow key is down. Let's go ahead and start moving. So <coughs> works out pretty good. So now we can go into our room. We can drop in a koala. And at the moment, we don't have much to test. We can just test, OK, can I move one square to the left and stop? Can I hold down the left button, walk all the way across? And you know, can I also, you know, there's, there's actually a whole bunch of things we need to test. And so one thing that the book does not have, and that is a easy way of resetting the room, at least at this point. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to add a key press letters R. And I'm going to reset this room. Ah, here we go. Main one, restart room. OK. So hit the play button. I have to wait for it to compile. All right, I can press one and stop. I can hold and stop. I can hold and not go through the wall. I can press and not go through the wall. Let's see if I can just go over one at a time. I can go over just one at a time. And I can just hold them down and stop. So it's working pretty good. And so now what we need to do is get in our other movement keys. So I'm just going to do this one key at a time and test each key. Probably a slight overkill. But remember, the, the, the finer grains you break up your tests into or your work into, the easier it is to find your mistakes. If I went through and implemented the entire Koala logic sequence before ever testing it, and then hit the play button to test it, and it doesn't work, 
where's my mistake? I just implemented the entire koala object. Where did I screw up? Whereas if it doesn't, if the koala doesn't work right now, if you just hit the play button and your koala did not behave properly, your koala is walking through walls, your koala is refusing to move, then you know where your mistake is. The only two logic points that you have is begin, step, and left. You know that's where your mistake has to be. Speaking of mistakes, probably the most common mistake is to... Uh, <clears throat> either forget to check the not on your check grid. If, if you don't have that checked, the koala will not move. Because you are aligned to the grid, so therefore you will immediately exit the event. You can see the koala is not budging. Uh, the other common mistake that would cause you to not to be able to move is on your if there is an object at position check, if you forgot to uncheck relative, well, actually this, sorry, this will turn you into ninja koala or ghost koala, depending on how you want to look at it. By unchecking relative, which is a mistake, don't do it, I'll still be able to move and I'll also be able to ghost right through the walls. Why? Because I'm checking the absolute coordinate negative 40, which is like this tile right here. There's nothing there, so I will always be able to move. So if your koala is not moving, you probably have an error with your if instance is aligned to grid. If your koala is ghosting through walls, you most likely have an error with your check object. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this command. So I'm going to say duplicate event keyboard right. Now I've got to make sure I go through and change everything. Copy paste is the game developer's best friend and their worst enemy. It can save you a lot of time to copy and paste logic that's mostly similar, just has a few minor differences. The problem is if you forget to change things, it can cause you a lot of headache trying to figure out where the mistake was. So uh, the, uh, the uh, align to grid is the same for uh, all, all the movements. My check is different though. Instead of checking negative 40, I want to check 40 for going to the right. I need to make sure that I change my movement. Make sure you don't leave it like this. Remember, this would randomly choose between those two directions. I only want one highlighted arrow. And of course, my change into koala left needs to be altered into a koala right. The stopping remains the same for both of them. Stop, moving, stand, <coughs> and we're good. None of the others need to be reset. The R key is still good, and my begin step is still good. Those are not touched anymore, pretty much. So now I can hit the test button. And I can move to the left, and I can move to the right just fine. All right, Koala's good. Let's go ahead and keep expanding this out. Actually, there's one thing we do need to test uh, that we're not testing right now, and that is Koalas should not walk on top of each other. So I'm gonna drop a second Koala in here. Now, since remember, since these are both the same object, they will both have exactly the same logic, which means using the left and right arrow key will move our koalas in perfect unison. These are like Borg koalas or something. They're all part of the collective. Resistance is futile. But since koalas are walls, notice how they stack up like that. And they've got this very interesting property of that other koala is not going to move until the other koala is a full tile away. As long as the, a koala is still even partially in a tile, our check object command will pick up on that and say, oh, wait a minute, there's still a wall in that spot. I'm not moving. Okay, so let's get the last of our things in here. Right or left, it only doesn't, honestly does not matter which of these you duplicate for getting up and down. So I'm going to duplicate event, keyboard up. 
This one we've got to change a couple more things. Uh, object at position, instead of checking on the X, we are now checking on Y. We are moving up, so I'm moving towards zero, so I need to do negative 40. I need to start moving in a direction, change my arrow to up, speed of five. Obviously my sprite needs to be updated to a koala up sprite. Check to make sure that copy paste went correct. This is where things are getting a little bit interesting. I should be able to have one koala trapped, and then the other koala should be able to move, like so. I'm beginning to see where some of the logic comes in for this puzzle. See, now I've got this koala all the way up in that corner, but this koala, the second koala, this guy down here, is not. So you're beginning to see some of the logic here. And now that poor little koala is stuck in there because there's no way for him to move down. But okay, it looks like up is working just fine. Let's duplicate events, keyboard down. Check an object at position Y40. Start moving in direction down. Change into sprite, koala down. Hit it. And now I should have a full range of motion. And as you can see, now this is where, you can, uh, hopefully you can start seeing where the puzzle elements on this are going to start coming into play. Because you by using the walls of, uh, and that stacking property of the koalas, I can really alter how the koalas navigate around. And to test everything, that one's fine, that one's fine, that one's fine, that one's fine, okay. Can I walk around my pillar here? Yes, I can. Can I walk into and out of each of these corners? Yes, I can. I'm probably being a little bit excessive on the testing here, but you never know. And of course, can I walk through here? Oops, and I should just test this direction as well. And I walk through here both ways, and I don't really need to test down here because it's already been tested. Okay, so koalas are moving, ready to get uh, move on to the next video. Now, if your koalas are not moving properly, uh, take this time between videos to try and uh, get them moving properly. Again, if your koala is ghosting through walls, that means you're missing a relative check somewhere. If the koala is just flat out refusing to move, that means your check grid is messed up. Um, and if your koala is mysteriously not moving, probably mean, or it moves most of the time, but once you get next to something, it stops moving. What you probably have there is a copy-paste error. Let me show that error here real quick. Let me grab my down and oh, let's say that I wasn't paying attention and I accidentally have my down checking for x40, y0. Maybe I did a duplicate off of right to do my down action. Perfectly possible. I duplicated right and I forgot to check that. I changed my moving in direction. I changed my sprite. And so what's going to happen here is as long as my koalas are in the free and clear, see how that koala stops? He's not moving down. He'll move up, but he won't move down past this point. He gets stuck. He should be moving. And now both of them are stuck. They won't move down past that point because I've got my check object is messed up due to the forced copy and paste error. So if your koalas are doing this, they seem to be moving just fine until they get to like this one scenario here, you have a copy paste error. This is also why we've got this little test maze here is that it you know gives us lots of opportunities to find these little errors. 
So make sure your koalas are moving as expected. Let me change this, uh, fix this error here before I forget and get completely baffled in the next videos to why my koalas broke. Ooh, 49, no. Maybe a 40. Yes, here. Test it real quick just to make sure I fixed them correctly. And okay, we got that, we got that. Oh, and I completely screwed something up there. All right. Right, because I'm not checking negative 40, I'm checking 40. Also, as you can see, ghosting through walls can also be a result of uh, bad checks. And that's why I went back through and double checked things. So, good, good. Good and good. All right, koalas are behaving themselves. No more ninja or ghosting. And uh, we're ready to start tossing in some goals. At the moment, all we got are some koalas with some very odd behavioral uh, properties. But there's no real game here yet. So in the next part, we'll start tossing in some actual goals, putting in the exits, and uh, also taking a look at hazards to make things a little bit more challenging. So, until the next video.